So here in Colorado, superchargers have always been pretty slim pickings. There hasn't been a ton of locations. Yeah, really, yeah, they haven't added any new locations yeah. in the past year and a half. Yeah, but there are now four new locations, maybe even more that we haven't found yet, going in as well as a new service center, which we are here at right now. So while Colorado is one of the largest markets for Teslas outside of California, of course, we really didn't have that much going on here in terms of new superchargers and stuff like that with all the new owners. So it's great to see this happening, but what about the rest of the world? So in the recent Q4 earnings letter, they actually went into detail how things are looking, especially compared to last year. So year over year, store and service locations is up 13%. The mobile service fleet is up 81%, which is massive. Everybody loves mobile service. Supercharger stations are up 28% and supercharger connectors are up 34%. So overall worldwide, a very large surge in them building out infrastructure, which actually gives Tesla a huge leg up over the competitors because Tesla owns all these, they know what they need, they know where all their owners are located, they have all that data. So they know where superchargers and stuff are likely to be needed. But right here, we're actually at a new service center and store location in Superior, Colorado. So this new Superior location is a brand new building built just for Tesla. They've been building this location up in Superior for over a year now, and it is yeah. just now ready for its grand opening. I believe it's gonna be opening up this week with the sales and service is gonna be starting later this month in February. And this brings to a total of three service centers in the Denver metro area. I'm not sure though if they're gonna be keeping the Evans location open. So originally when Tesla started its presence in Colorado, there was only one location for service and it's actually off Evans Denver area and it's not in the greatest area there's a lot of the roads around it I don't like at all They're pretty narrow um, for that much traffic. but then they opened up their new building which is huge on Broadway and they kept the Evans location actually so it'll be cool to see if they have now these three locations rather than maybe just get rid of the Evans I honestly don't know how like their lease is with that but it would still be nice to have three because there's a ton a ton of new owners here in Colorado and we've heard rumors that they're looking at putting a service center in down in Colorado Springs as well. So that really helped people further south. Exactly. And this location is actually going to be really helpful. Actually, there's a Tesla Model 3 right there. Um, this location will be really helpful for people like in Boulder and Fort Collins. They won't have to drive all the way down through Denver, which can get some really bad traffic to get their cars serviced. Or even what? hopefully they do deliveries out of here. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure they will. So I think no. it'll help even people from Wyoming and stuff. Cause, oh, totally. Cause yeah. Currently, they have to drive from all different states if they do need to go to a service center yeah. that mobile service can't handle whatever needs to be done. This will mean they won't have to drive all the way down to the Littleton service center. So this sales and service center is huge for the market in Colorado, but there's also four new superchargers and they are actually all V3 superchargers, three of which are in the Denver metro area. One is just outside and that one is located in Idaho Springs. So the supercharger up in Idaho Springs is right off of I-70. It's gonna be really convenient for a lot of ski traffic or any traffic all along I-70. There's eight supercharger stalls there. It's located in a uh, right next to a come and go parking lot. And this lot is kind of small, but it, and they do have four spots of the eight, which are shared parking. And this is a really popular spot because there's a nearby restaurant like Tommyknockers and Bojo's. Mm -hmm. And so there's gonna be a lot of I think icing within, well, it's not icing, I guess, if they're allowed to park there, but I would ask that if you're going to charge there, try to use those shared spots first, because then that will keep yeah. those other four spots open for Teslas only. Yeah. And that way it'll be, you'll be able to always have eight Teslas charging instead of four. So besides the one in Idaho Springs, as Eric mentioned, they're opening up at least three locations in the Denver metro area. That is more than tripling the number of supercharger stalls available. Yeah. Currently there's only six stalls out at the supercharger out close to the DIA, and then there's another 10 down on the south part of town by Park Meadows. But we're gonna be adding 16 new stalls at Colorado Mills, eight new stalls at a come and go up in Thornton, and eight more stalls at a come and go out by Brighton. Which, if you just heard that, come and go seems to be installing a lot of Tesla superchargers. Three of the four new locations are come and goes. We've checked a few other locations but haven't spotted any others yeah. yet. But Tesla do, does still have it on their plans to add at least three new supercharger locations. They've had it on the on the map for a while to add one in Denver, one in Cherry Creek, and another one down in the Tech Center. Now, I, I don't 
think there's any come and go locations there, so they're probably not yeah. going to be come and goes for those. But I'm thinking we're still going to be getting some other superchargers here coming in the next year or so. The ones downtown in Cherry Creek might be the urban superchargers, but I still think the one down at the tech center is probably going to be a regular supercharger location with V3. So, like you said, the Colorado Mills location is actually going to house 16 V3 superchargers with potential room to expand. And they're actually located right next to the parking garage and right next to the Electrify America chargers. Now, the funny thing is we have been scouting out for the supercharger location for like two years yeah. on the west side of town. And we were thinking it was gonna be in a different shopping center, but a couple weeks ago I was like, no, the facilities there aren't the best. It's gotta be yeah. Colorado Mills. We go to this restaurant there, Colorado Mills, every week and we've been driving around. We, we went looking for the supercharger did not find it last no. week, but then we did find it a few days later. We we're literally we're like 50, 50 feet, away. feet away from it. It was right next to the Electrify America chargers, which yeah. we were looking at to see what the rates they could charge at. And it was right on the other side of the wall. So had we gone 50 more feet, we would have we seen, seen 16 superchargers, which look like they are almost ready turned on. So the location in Colorado Mills is definitely going to be a really popular treasure because it's yeah. located just off of I-70, going to really help with all the mountain traffic heading up into the mountains or coming back yeah. and wanting to avoid having to charge anywhere else in the metro area. It's close to some good amenities, there's lots of restaurants there, there's, there's a hotel which I suppose could allow 24 hour bathrooms yeah. and lots of other stores just in, in the Colorado Mills Mall. Location out in Brighton, it's more remote, It's there's nothing there except for the come and go gas station, that's going to be good for travelers along I-76 who are heading between Colorado and Nebraska. Yeah. The location up in Thornton, it's again, it's a good gas station. There's some restaurants nearby. Some hotels. Some hotels. So that might be good for travelers heading north or south on I-25. So that location is interesting because two of them are actually split to kind of like a different part of the parking lot right across from where the others are. Don't really normally see a lot of that, but where that location is, there's not like eight locations or parking spots right next it's to It's not each a other. huge lot. So it's nice that they were able to fit those eight stalls oh, yeah. in there. Yeah, a lot of new stuff coming in Colorado. I don't know, if you guys have seen any ones that we haven't mentioned, definitely drop it in the comments below. Yeah, because they're still supposed to be building another like yeah, eight or more. Or at, so. Well, that's just in the metro area. In metro area, yeah. But within the entire state of Colorado, they're supposed to be adding them all along, you know, like Walsenburg, Telluride, yeah. Uh, all, all across the state, which allows you to get off of the interstates and see the rest of the state. Yeah. So that'll be great. I mean, you can do that now. It just takes a little more planning, mm -hmm. but it'll be amazing once you'll be able to just go and not have to worry about finding a supercharger out anywhere in the state. So yeah, let us know if you guys have seen any new superchargers or service centers where you guys live, because I know a lot of you aren't necessarily here in Colorado. Curious to know though, how big this expansion is of Tesla's because we did just hear their Q4 numbers and everything looked really, really promising. And I think those numbers will allow them in 2020 to expand very, very rapidly. And the nice thing again about the supercharger network is that it's integrated into the computer. So yeah. when you are doing a road trip, you just tell it where you want to go and it tells you where to go, how long to stop, and it shows you all your superchargers, you know, whether you're driving yeah. 100 miles or 1,000 miles or 3,000 miles across the country, it will tell you everywhere you need to go. And you don't need to worry about, you know, having another pulling out a credit card to do payment or anything, it's so much more convenient than any other electric car companies uh, charging because nobody else has their own network. Yeah, like the Porsche Taycan that's been traveling and been having a lot of issues because it doesn't tell you where to stop. So you just, yeah, you just gotta figure it all out yourself. Yeah. Anyway, that's basically it for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what's going on around here in Colorado. Definitely let us know though in the comments below how Tesla is doing in your neck of the woods. As always, though, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you guys are looking to accessorize your Model S, X, or Model 3, definitely check them out. All linked down below in the comments. And using code Tesla Inventory will get you 15% off your first order. My two must-have accessories for Model 3, since that's what I normally 
drive the S is normally David's driver is going to be a center console wrap just to help protect that gloss black material that Tesla uses as well as a matte screen protector really helps cut down any glare from the sun as well as cut back any fingerprints. As always though, thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. Go ahead and click here to subscribe here for some other ones and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.